Tiffany say lean back, peace, love, and palm trees, and all that, all that, all that. So we are back with another video, another power video. You know, power took a break last week where it has this thing every year that it takes two weeks or a week off, so then we're waiting a whole two weeks for a new episode. Let me tell you, they did this shit at the right time because I feel like if they would have made us wait two weeks for another episode while we would get any shitty ass episodes, that definitely would have been a problem. But being that we waited two weeks and we got a fire ass episode, I couldn't be more thankful. I'm just so excited. So this episode is season five, episode eight, A Friend of the Family. All right, y'all. Okay. So this episode starts out, with, like I said, where we left off with Angela, Ghost, and Tasha. So Ghost is trying to take the rap for the killing of Raymond Jones. So Angela and Tasha are not having that. He's like, no, don't worry. I got this. I'm going to take care of this. I'm the man of the family. This is what I'm going to do for my family. So as he's going to walk out, Angela just stops him like Mr. St. Patrick and just starts interrogating him as if he was already in an interrogation room, as if he turned himself in already. So just going through all the motions, how all of this shit and all of the things that they already up under his ass for can come back to him if he turns himself in for this murder. And he gets way in over his head by these questions. And he's like, well, Angela, if you give me a fucking second, then I can sit and answer these questions. And Tasha's like, ghost, they're not going to give you that, that... That, what you need they're not gonna give you a second they're gonna interrogate you until you fucking crack so then he realizes like okay so shit i cannot take the fall for this because then i'm gonna be asked out period on a whole bunch of other counts so then he comes up with this idea like oh we're, let's just fill um what did he say we're, let's just frame dre so then as he leaves tasha looks at angela and I, I, again it's just so crazy to me how the wife and 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 the mistress are like good girlfriends but at this point like i said they sister wives y'all they are not uh fucking mistress and wife anymore they work together they move together they even move behind ghosts back together so they're definitely sister wives at this point so tasha tells angela like listen fuck a dre let's get to canaan so that's all tasha is thinking about through the rest of this episode is canaan and this episode is really fixated on canaan i noticed that a lot that's why i figured something was gonna go down or something was gonna get a little crazy with what he did because it was focusing a lot on canaan Ghost then puts Tommy onto his plan, which is to frame Dre. Dre is like, you know what? I'm what? Tommy's like, you know what? Listen, that's what you want to do. Let's do it. But he's already, you know, he's not really trusting Ghost because Ghost's been doing a lot of shit behind his back and just making him feel like he's the lesser of the two, how he always has felt and how it's always has been between the two. But he's down to take Dre down and frame him for what's going on because Ghost explains to him, like, this is for Tariq. And he's like, all right, boom, say no more. No matter what's going on, say no more because I got Reek's back. So that's all Tommy's motive is. So then you have Sax and Mark who then get Proctor in the office and are just questioning him about the rate of the killing of the correction officer that goes dead what's his name not eddie murphy charlie murphy so so he's looking at this shit like what the fuck and then he starts to get suspicious you could tell like his mind is just going he's just wond wondering like what the fuck how did this happen and he starts getting a little you know nervous and you can tell that they're actually getting to him what they're doing is working being that they brought this to him and shit is starting to add up and he's starting to put the pieces together he then goes to ghost and like starts questioning ghost about the stuff and ghost is kind of like i don't know what you're talking about uh i don't you know i'm not really feeding into any of that because at the end of the day like this guy's still a lawyer he actually just got his license back so ghost is kind of like not giving him too much but kind of giving him some insight because you already know that proctor already knows a lot he knows what the fuck goes on without them ever really saying anything, but he's still in the know. But Ghost is seeing that he's like really catching on because he's starting to ask questions and just get a little, you know, too close to home with these questions. So then Ghost Peeps was going on and he's like, eh, alright, cool. Well, we'll talk later because you want some other shit right now well now you know mr Tariq. he wants to be like this whole street guy he wants to do this he wants to move like this and this and that so kanan is like all right boy i'm gonna put you on to the game gives him drugs he gives him like a whole thing of bars a whole pound of weed some coke and this and that he's like i want you to move this you know and Tariq is feeling like oh don't worry i got this i come he's like nigga you don't know what you're doing yet. Let me teach you. Let me school you on how the streets run. Because whatever them classes that you're taking up in school right now is not what we're doing out here in the street. So let me teach you. He actually gives him these uh, these pills and they on the street. And he's like, yo, go get these off your hand right now. And don't come back to me until I tell you that, <laughs> that, that you're done. Like, don't even think about coming back until all these drugs is gone. I want them off and on the street. Off of you and on the street. So Tariq's like, what the fuck? Like, are you serious? How am I supposed to do that? He's like, my nigga, figure 
figure it out because that's exactly what's happening right now. So then Tariq comes back and he gets all of them off and Kanan is like, it's no fucking way that you just got all of those pills off of you right now. He's like, nah, nah, I did. Like, here's the money. So Kanan checks the money. He's like, nigga, this is a fake ass bill. What are you doing? So then Tariq feeling some type of way because he feel got, you know, because then now he just made himself look stupid in front of Kanan. So then he runs up on the niggas, gets the strap. He like, yo, where the strap? Get the strap. He gets the strap and pulls up on them with a gun. I'm like, Tariq. What the fuck is going on with you? I just, like, honestly, too much to quit Too fucking much. So Tariq comes in the house, right? He see his mother there with Angela. This nigga looking at her like, what the fuck is she doing here? Because you know, he never saw from Miss Angela. That's like the, the woman who destroyed his family, who destroyed his life. In his eyes, like, all the blame goes to her. So he's not fucking with her at all. So he's telling Tasha like man like I don't trust her like what is she doing here and Tasha's like well I trust her when it comes to this I trust her so get your ass over here and this is what we about to do Angela all uncomfortable and shit she feeling some type of way bitch just shut up and deal with it that's what I was thinking like Angela you better not fucking say nothing because you are that bitch who fucked up this family. Whether you like it or not. Although Ghost had his decisions too. Let's not get it twisted. You did fuck up this family. And you was trying to play stepmother to them in your little ass apartment. Let's not forget. Tasha puts Tariq on about what her plan is to set Kanan up. Because this bitch is ready to get Kanan out the fucking door. And honestly I've been sick of him too. So I was you know team Tasha for a little minute or whatever. So... <laughs> She's telling Tariq, like, you know, this is what we got to do. We're going to, you know, frame Kanan, and I need you to do... Well, she didn't say what she needed him to do, but she's basically telling him, like, this is her plan. And he's like, no, and then you sitting here trusting Angela out of all people? No, you need to find somebody else because that's not going to go down like that. Like, that's my boy. You know, him having Kanan back, like how he been having Kanan back for however long he been having his motherfucking back, right? So, he's, you know, telling his mom, no, this and that. And Tasha comes to the point where she's like, listen, this is what we doing, and I can go to jail for life for this. If I have to take the rap for you. So, therefore, it's either me or Kanan. And she gave him that fucking ultimatum. And he looking like, Ma, just pick somebody else and walk. And I'm like, no the fuck you didn't. Because at this point, it's no more conversation. Like, it's nothing more back and forth to be had. If your mother gives you a fucking ultimatum between her and someone else, you go with, like, you don't, you pick your mother. Like, that, that's what I would think. Now we at Tommy's place. And Teresi and his wife Connie comes over for um some dinner or whatever and i just want to know if y'all caught the shade that when she saw lakeisha she asked tommy if he had a cook like is if lakeisha was the fucking help i don't know i hope y'all noticed that because i definitely noticed that but anyway um they all having dinner together when the fuck did lakeisha and tommy become so ride or die and in love with each other like i knew she was digging him for a while but i didn't know it was like to this level because he was like this is my ride or die we've been through some shit and this and that. and i'm like when did like i feel so lost because when did this shit happen like i don't remember it happening at all so then they get back to lakeisha house i guess they was about to fuck or whatever and lakeisha so there's a knock at the door and he's like oh the fuck is he coming in here at this time like i know you ain't got no nigga pulling up lakeisha and she's like tommy ain't no nigga coming here like go into the door for yourself so he opens the door and it just so happens to be a nigga but this nigga is not here to smash lakeisha he's here to serve her some papers and these papers are saying it's a subpoena basically that she has to up testify up here in front of a grand jury for what's the the death of NYPD Raymond Jones. And she is like, Tommy, what the fuck is this? Like, she's walling. She's walling the fuck out because she's like, this is, you know, anybody would be scared. I would be scared too, bitch. Okay? I don't know. I don't want to lie in front of nobody's fucking grand jury. Basically, Tommy is telling her, like, you know, you got to you gotta hold it down. Like, you got to do what Tasha tells you, to, tells you to say. Like, you have to do that. And it's in that. She's like, I don't want to fucking do this. Like, I'm scared, Tommy. And he's like, listen, I know, but, you know, you just got to trust Tasha. So then here she go talking to Tasha, right? And Tasha's like, no, you got to do this and this and this. And then when Lakeisha looks like she's a little, like, on the fence about it, here go Tasha. Oh, do it for Tommy. Do not use the dick that I'm getting against me, bitch, okay? Do not put Tommy in this because you want me to lie for fucking you. Because now once, if you noticed in the scene before, Tommy did not ask her to fucking lie for him at all. All he mentioned was Tasha and Tariq. I mean, of course he's trying to protect the family. But, like, it's not for him. It's not really saving him. So the fact that Tasha would even use that against her friend, 
time was really fucking whack. And I'm gonna tell you something right now. Tasha ain't no bitch I wanna be friends with. Straight the fuck up. Cause you ain't, first of all, you dick me over with my weave salon. And then you want me to lie for you in front of a grand jury? No. Tasha ain't no bitch I could be friends with. No. Mm mm. It's not even no perks. She's not even getting no perks to this life. The only thing she's getting is dick from Tommy. Like, she's not getting no real perks. I'm over this conversation. I don't even want to talk about it no more next. So, in the midst of all of that, we see Tasha trying to talk to Ghost and into setting up Kanan. And he's like, Tasha, no, that's just not gonna work. Like, we setting up Dre and this is what the fuck we doing and that's it. Like, this is, I said, I said what I said. So then here we go. We have Proctor, who is my favorite person on power right but i don't know i don't know that might not be that might not be lasting for much longer because proctor meets with his cousin that they've been um interrogating that he you know hangs out with and he gives proctor this laptop and on the laptop proctor then says you know this evidence on this laptop that could put jane ghost and tommy away in prison for a very long time so you know to protect myself or whatever because you know i feel like he's he was down for them for a little bit because he does fuck with them. But if you think about it, I didn't really realize this. I guess because I got so caught up with, like, Proctor just being a down-ass person for them. But I didn't realize that, like, Proctor really didn't want to work for Ghost. Like, he was really conned and blackmailed into working for Ghost. And he's like, yo, like, I don't, I don't want to do this. Like, this is, you know, they made me work for them. I don't know if I want to, you know, go down for them. And as no, no shade as he should not. So, you know, at this point, we're starting to see Proctor twist a little bit because he's not really digging what's going on. So Tariq and and Kanan are on their way to the Italians to drop these drugs, right? Right? Because he had all these drugs that he wanted to drop to the Italians that he was gonna give Tariq to to sell. So next thing you know the cops pull him over. Bitch. I'm like they about to get pulled over with these motherfucking drugs and Tariq stupid ass about to get locked up. But you know what good for him because he's stupid, right? No, bitch, that's not what's going down. Kanan is like, no, we good. Like, you ain't got nothing to worry about, little man. You know, I ain't going back to jail. Like, straight, I ain't going back to jail. So, it's actually jumping from scene to scene. The scene with Kanan and Tariq and then Tasha and Ghost. Because, you know, so now, right? Okay, okay. So, Tommy and Ghost are supposed to meet up to set Dre up that night. Or do some, get a hit on something, right? So, he goes, going in the safe to get the gun that... Um, the, the murder weapon that Tasha had put in the safe. He goes to the safe and realizes that the gun is not in the safe. So then he's like, Tasha, where the fuck is the gun? She's like, with Tariq. And he's like, and where the fuck is Tariq? She's like, with Kanan. So then it pans back to Tariq and Kanan. So then they go and open the fucking trunk and boom, the murder weapon is right there in the fucking trunk. And I'm like, this motherfucker Tariq, okay. All right, so now you're working with your mother. Finally, you coming to your motherfucking senses again on the winning team, ho. Because that was some bullshit that you was doing riding with Kanan. Then it goes back to Tasha and Ghost and they're just going back. He's like, Tasha, what the fuck? Like, you don't know. Like, you know what Kanan is capable of. You know that nigga ain't gonna go down easy. Why would you put Tariq in a situation like that? So then it pans back to Tariq uh, and Kanan. So they take him out the car. They say, you know, his mother had um, filed a missing person on him. Like, he couldn't be found. And, you know, we were looking for him and we found him here with you. So then they ask Tariq, like, Oh, do you know him? And he's like, yeah, he's a friend of the family. So this is the friend of the family that the episode is based on. And I said that this shit was about Kanan because it was very focused on Kanan from the whole episode, right? So then they asked Tariq, are you being held against your will? And he's like, yes. And I'm like, oh, shit. Like, he really with the winning team. Like, okay. Okay, Tariq. You could get a pass now. So then Kanan looking at him, he's like, you know, like, fuck. So then they arresting him. He like, I ain't about to go down. But you know, Kanan just said, I'm not going back to jail, right? <laughs> so he literally does what he does. Takes the fucking gun. Shoots the cop that was uh, handcuffing him. They already got Tariq in the NYPD car um locked in so you know you cannot get out from back there because it's locked they usually have you know people who they arrest back there so you, obviously you will not be able to just unlock the door and just hop your happy ass out so Tariq is in there shook like trying to because Kanan is shooting up the fucking place okay he's shooting up all these fucking cops like no y'all niggas I said I wasn't going back to jail now so all y'all niggas is dying and that's straight right so then he goes up to this last cop the last cop that's alive 
And mind you, he's shot in the stomach at this point. But he goes, he makes his way over to the last cop that's alive and shoots him dead in the stomach. Looks at Tariq, and I'm not even gonna lie to y'all. I swear I'm not gonna lie to y'all. I was very, very, very shook for Tariq because I was like, this nigga can't and kill his son. This nigga can't and kill his son. This nigga Kanan killed his son, okay? So when you kill your son, you capable of killing any fucking body. So in my head, by Tariq, like, that's all I was like, fuck, he's about to get killed. And let me tell you something, that little nigga was shook. Like, that was the first time he was not trying to be fucking gangster because he knew what Kanan was capable of and he knew Kanan would take him the fuck out. So then Kanan actually spares his life because you know what's crazy? Just prior to that, they were talking about Tariq um Kanan killing Sean and he was like don't worry little nigga I would never do that to you so you know I guess he stuck to his word about that because he spared Tariq's life and then just dipped out and then he gets in his car I don't know what the way he thought he was going but he starts spitting up blood coughing up but next thing you know Kanan dead at the steering wheel like looking dumb as always so i'm like okay but a part of me just really don't feel like kanan is dead because that nigga done escaped a fire like ghost on set his whole body on fire and he still was alive after that so at this point i'm like okay now that all of this has went down and gone on and the fucking Tariq is in custody and everybody's in fucking custody and shit, the whole St. Patrick family is there and they questioning Tariq. Tariq is putting on a show, y'all. He <laughs> No tears coming out his motherfucking eyes and he's there putting on a show. They questioning Tasha. They just questioning everybody. Long story short, the motherfuckers get off because that's what they do best. And it's so funny because they coming out one way and Angela coming out another way. And then her and Tasha giving each other that like, like, you know, that wink. And it, it's still crazy to me because they're sister wives. But I mean, I get it. I get it. Do You got to do what you got to do. So as the episode is closing up, you see Dre going to the, the he, it's like a refrigerator scene. I don't know if they're in the club where Quinn works, but it's Quinn and Cristobal and Dre. And all you do is see fucking... Diego's head just there. I guess Tommy did that because Tommy's the one who had the head. Okay, like, see, I don't know. It could have been Tommy because I know Kanan was supposed to be the one to drop the head off to Tommy. But then I don't know if Kanan still had it and he planted it there before he got arrested. So I guess we're going to see how that shit plays out. But Dre look sick as fuck. They have Proctor, so it's it's Mock, Sax, Donovan. I don't know what the woman's name is, but the only woman on the team that's after Angela besides Blanca. And... Proctor's like, listen, I don't know what to tell y'all about James St. Patrick, but one thing I can tell you that is, is that if anyone is helping him, it's Angela fucking Valdez. And bitch, let me just tell you something. I feel like everybody got hard, everybody panties got wet, because now they know that, like, they have an insight to say that Angela is onto something, because they've been trying to get at this bitch for the longest. I'm really scared for Angela because... She don't even know what's coming her way, but bitch, they are after her and with Proctor turning, and I'm not happy about it because he's my favorite. But with Proctor turning a blind eye, honey, to them and just giving the cops what they want, bitch, let me tell you, I don't know where Angela fate lies. So the Tommy and Ghost end up at the morgue. They, you know, they have Kanan's body, they're covered, and goes Tommy is basically saying like you know my brother you do a lot of shit on your own and I just really can't trust you and I really never know because you just always think for yourself and do things on your own so you know how can I ever trust you with anything Ghost is telling him like you know I really had nothing to do with this with the whole Kanan situation he's like bro I can't believe you and you really can't be mad at Tommy for that because Ghost have a really really bad track record so it's like mm, what are you gonna do then they go to remove the fucking sheet from over Kanan's body. And I'm gonna be honest with y'all, there was still some doubt in my mind like, okay, he really is not dead. Like, that's gonna be somebody else when they left that sheet because I just feel like Kanan, Kanan just wasn't gonna go down like that. Like, I didn't think that was gonna happen. But then they raised the fucking, uh, she and it's Kanan laying there mad dead and can I tell y'all something a part of me still felt like that nigga was gonna open his eyes because the devil don't sleep honey but that's just how the episode ended talking about get the strap like hashtag get the strap it was a very very good episode like I feel like it was spicy from the time it started to the time it ended but why the fuck did y'all wait till we have two episodes left to give us some spice like, we really waited all season for something to happen. I want to see niggas dying, bodies dropping. I need to see all the shits. I need to see Angela go to jail. I need everything to happen. I need Tommy to kill Teresi. I need all of this shit to go down because I'm not happy with what's going on. Y'all need to listen to me because I want to see this shit go down. And I'm pretty sure everybody else the fuck does too. But 
I thank you guys for watching. You already know. If you fuck with me, I super, super duper fuck with you. I hope you gave me a big thumbs up. I want to know your comments. Comment down below and let me know your thoughts on this on my reaction on the fucking video on my review on the on the show. Like I want to know what y'all thinking was going on because I kind of feel like everybody feels the same way. But it, I still want to know your opinion. If you have difference of opinion, definitely let me know. I hope you like me, cause you know, and subscribe to my channel because I think I'm pretty fucking cool. So you know, why not dig me and subscribe to my channel? That'll really, you know, mean a lot to you, girl. All love if you fuck with me. You know, I super duper fuck with you. And I'll holla at y'all later in the next video. Peace, love, and palm trees, and all that, all that, all that.